us out tonight. And uh, how do you hear me, Caleb? Is everything okay? On the we're good. We're good to go live on Facebook. Hey guys, I'd ask uh, if you could be praying for me this week. I'm gonna. I've been ha- putting a, together a message um, on uh, on Israel, and I talked to you guys about it earlier. Gonna preach it on Sunday. We're gonna do something a little bit different on Sunday. Um, probably gonna forego a lot of the things that we normally do. I need about 45 minutes in the pulpit. Uh, it's hard to split this sermon up, and I want to make sure it, I, you guys get everything, and it's, 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 it, the, the good Lord just laid this on my heart. And um, please, uh, the, and I just pray that, that I, could, I, could, I could get it out correctly. And, and um, there's a lot of things that people don't realize about Islam and a lot of things that's happening in the book of Genesis right now. Uh, that that was foretold in in at the start of the Bible, and we'll and I and I, I'd like to start preaching on it right now. But we've got a neat message tonight. We're going to talk about um, um, and it, a very obscure passage. And as disciples of Jesus, we were fortunate to possess a powerful tool that we all have, and we all know that that's the Holy Spirit. But when we leverage the power for His glory, we get His wisdom. And uh, we're going to be tonight in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 23, and we're going to look at four verses, 20 uh, through 23. And, you know, the thing about it is when, when we learn how to leverage this awesome power that God gives us, these life-altering experiences that we may see as challenges in our life and maybe the season that all of you are going through right now, um, you're going to see uh, the, many times that God is going to use that season and that challenge to do something very rewarding. And tonight you're going to see a, a very, uh, this is a, uh, a very obscure passage that not a lot of people uh, preach on or talk about, about an obscure soldier who goes on to be, and he is a private in, in, in King David's army, and he's going to go on to be the commander of Solomon's army. And, um, uh, and it's, it's really, really cool. And the, tonight, the, the title of our message is Fighting Lions. And we're going to be in 2 Samuel 23, 20. Uh, and I read God's word. Benaiah was the son of Jedidiah and the son of a valiant man from Kabzil who had done many deeds. He had killed two lions like heroes of Moab. He also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, a spectacular man. Egyptian had a spear in his hand. He went down to him with the staff, wrestled the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with his own spear. Verse 22. These things Benaiah, the son of Jedidiah, did and won the name among three mighty men. He was more than honored that the 30, but he did not attain to the first three. And David appointed him over his guard. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. And I thank you for this text. And I thank you for this beautiful, beautiful, obscure passage that has, that is so relevant, Lord, in many of our lives, Lord. And this is, this is an inspirational passage. And I just pray, Lord, that you'll use it to to your glory, and those who are here today, I I so appreciate them, and I also appreciate the people that are going to be listening to this in a podcast tonight, and I appreciate, uh, uh, Lord, that that, that you can get this word out to the multitudes, and we ask this thing, in in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so the 21st, in this 23rd uh, chapter of Samuel, David is coming to the end of his life, and and he is a, uh, he's old, and he, is, he has surrounded himself with what the Bible calls mighty men. So he has, this, he has this giant staff. And a trademark, as many of you know, a trademark of a great leader is, is men that put themselves on talented teams. And one of these mighty men uh, that David puts on his staff is a soldier named Benaiah. Now, this is where we're going to pick up this story. And you're only going to see about four verses of this because this is the only place that's going to talk about it in Second Chronicles also. But, but this is, you don't see this uh, often in the Bible. Benaiah, as I read God's word, was the son of Je- Je- Jehadiah, 
the son of a valiant man from Kebzil, who had done many deeds. He had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. He had also gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. So I'm going to stop right there just for a second. I want you guys to think about this. He had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. So think about this. When, when they talk about lion-like heroes, they're talking about these guys, these two guys that he had killed were probably somewhere, some, somebody like Goliath. These were, really, these were really incredible soldiers. And a lot of times the, the translations don't do this justice because if you, if you look at some other translations, for example, you might have, uh, it says, two, two sons of Ariel of Moab. Now, when we think of Ariel, uh, a man named Ariel was a great power in the Moab world. So, so when we look at that, and that's what it talks about in the Hebrew text. So the fact that he killed these two men, these weren't just two soldiers that you go by and kill. These were, these were two of the most uh, powerful soldiers in the Moab army. Now, the King James Version will, will call these lion-like men. So these guys were no joke. So, so he kills these lion-like men in a battle, uh, and David is his commander, the old David. And, 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 the, and this, it's amazing to me that the passage in the King James Version talks about these lion-like men. But Naiah had to have been a mighty, mighty man if he was able to do this. But now, understand this. At this point in time, Benaiah was a very, very young uh, private in David's army. But then notice uh, uh, in verse 20 what also happens on this verse. This is, this is pretty cool. Killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. So basically, for whatever reason, Benaiah was, was out fighting uh, with, with David's army. He comes across a, a lion and jumps into a pit and kills this lion. Now this, I mean, this is in the Bible. You know, the Bible can be a fascinating book because a lot of times things come alive that you just don't see in there. So this young private goes, he has already killed two lion-like figures of one of their biggest rival armies, but one day, out of the blue, he jumps in a pit, it's snowing outside, okay, and he kills this lion. And so, so I assume that that, that that line was probably some type of threat uh, to the army. And so who, who just jumps into a pit with a line? I mean, that's, and he's not armed with anything. It's not like that one that, uh, that, that J.V. showed us this morning that uh, almost looked like a mountain lion that got into his uh, chicken coop. Uh, if you guys hadn't heard that story, we'll, we'll tell you about it after, after the, the message. But... Nonetheless, he probably just had an arm and a spear, uh, so, uh, a, a, a spear. Benaiah was an exceptional soldier who saw things differently than most people, just based on these few passages. If we, who, us, who would perceive a lion as a daunting 500-pound figure? I would, and I would see this as a 500-pound problem, but Benaiah had to have seen this as an opportunity. Who goes into a pit on a snowy day? It had to be cold, you know, and think about this. Now, even though being a pit on a, uh, on a snowy day would be considered a stroke of bad luck by many, Benaiah, this, this guy, if he's mentioned in the Bible, and this story is mentioned in the Bible, he had to be full of the Holy Spirit. And he would take a risk, and he would go bold. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have heard of this guy before. His name's Pastor Mark Batterson. He wrote an entire book on, about this one passage. And it was so motivating to him, and he was so inspired by him when he saw this. But Nias' fearless encounter with the lion caught the king of Israel's attention, the king of Israel being David. Now think about this. He was impressed with his uh, bravery. So what does David do? He sees this guy, this young private, and he asks him for a job interview. Pretty fascinating. So now this young private, who's already killed two uh, uh, Moab leaders, he's killed a lion, and he has some exceptional qualities, and now he's getting noticed by the most powerful uh, uh, king in the world at the time, who is David. His courage opened the door for him. Now, Benaiah was serving basically in a low-level private, but you, you have to think this man was serving God daily, and regardless if he was a private, this dude was going bold 
for the kingdom. And God turned in a, what was, was perceived as a problem, okay, into an incredible, incredible opportunity. There was an author named, uh, or a pastor named F.W. Borum, and he had a beautiful sermon about Benaiah. And he, he, he describes it like this. Killing the lion, which he points out, Benaiah met the worst of enemies, which is the lion, on the worst places, which is a pit, under the worst conditions, on a snowy day, and he won. With God's strength, he wins. And many times we, 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 we second-guess ourselves about our strengths, about our abilities, but when we have something that's ordained with God, many times it will happen. Imagine having faith enough that you would, you would do anything that God asked you to do. Ask yourself that question, would you do anything that God would call you to do? Anything, anywhere. Imagine, think about this, think of that this way. What if you knew whatever God told you to do, you were going to have all the resources and all the manpower that you would need to accomplish that? You would probably do it. And that's the kind of faith that we need to have many times. But Benaiah is showing this incredible, incredible faith. But look here at verse 21. It gets better. And then he killed an Egyptian, spectacular man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, so he went down to him with a staff, wrestled the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with his own spear. Now, if you look at this, you would think that Benaiah had already won the Congressional Medal of Honor with his first Moab, but now he's doing this again with an Egyptian, with a spectacular man, okay? Now, these, these exploits had to face an incredible soldier, and once again he excelled. And this time, Benaiah was unarmed, and he would have, and most people would crumble at the sight of this. You're fighting one of the best soldiers in the Egyptian army now, and now you're unarmed. So what does Benai do? He, he fights and wrestles away his spear, and he kills him with his own spear. Now, the book of 1 Chronicles 11.23, you don't have to go there, but if you want to sometime when you're doing your Bible studies, will illustrate this story, uh, this same story. And he said that, in, in, in it, and it says in the book of 1 Chronicles that this, this Egyptian soldier was seven feet tall. So David kill Goliath, but he's not the only giant slayer in his army. He's starting to notice this guy, this young kid named Benaiah, and he kills a pretty tall Egyptian. What Benaiah did was fascinating. It was, it was enormous, um, uh, it's enormous feat in the army to be mentioned here, but look what happens here. Look what happens here in 23. These things Benaiah, the son of Jedidiah, did and won a name among three mighty men. Now, what he's talking about here in the three mighty men, uh, the three mighty men were like commanders and deputy commanders of, of David's army here, okay? So Benaiah, through God's grace, had made a name for himself. And I believe this, this obscure passage that, frankly, I don't think I've ever heard a sermon about up until this, uh, that I, that when I was growing up or all my times in church. Uh, I believe that what this points out is God is in the business and I think every one of you in this room can, can attest to this. He is, in the he is in the business of strategically positioning us at the right place, at the right time, for the right reason. I can look at every single one of you in this room, and I know for a fact God puts you where he's at right now, strategically, for the right place, at the right time, for the right reason. So is Caleb, so is Gail, so is Audrey, so is Don and Fran, so is J.D., all of you here are, are at the right place at the right time. But there's been other times in your life when you have been with other people at the right time at the right place. And this is what I believe God was doing with Benaiah. And I'm sure, you know, this, this, this being the, what, what's in, it, uh, eventually going to happen, he's going to be the king, he's going to be the commander of all the bodyguards in David's army. Probably was the last thing in his mind that day he was fighting the lion on a pit on a snowy day. But see, what was happening is God was shaping Benaiah to do something incredible to be one of Israel's greatest soldiers. The truth is that God always uses our past experiences, if we are in him, to glorify him, to prepare us for future opportunities. However, these opportunities sometimes can be intimidating. They can be challenging. And how we respond to these ultimately will determine our destiny with Christ. 
we can let fear take over and we can run away from these challenges or we can't, okay? God's plan is to seize the opportunities that he has ordained for us. In the book, If Only, and I haven't read the, read the book, I've just read quotes about it. I need to sit down and read the book sometime, but it's, it's, titled, it's titled If Only. Dr. Neil Rose makes a fascinating observation about two types of regrets, okay? The first regret is the regret of action. The second regret is the regret of inaction. You think about that. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Sometimes you, wish, you go back in time, you say, man, I shouldn't have said that, or I wish I hadn't have done that, I wish I hadn't have done this, and you regret your action, okay? But sometimes there's a regret of inaction. What they call this in theological terms is the sin of omission versus the sin of commission. I believe the church has focused on the sins of commission for far too long. A list of don'ts, a list of don'ts. And in the end, I genuinely believe that God is more concerned about the sin of omission than he is commission. You follow me? He's more concerned about not our action, but our inaction many times. Our calling <laughs> is so much higher than simply just running away at times. And in closing, when David fled from King Saul, he placed Benaiah in command of the 30, a select group of warriors, second only to the three highest rank of bravery. Later, Joab was made commander-in-chief. Benaiah was appointed the high place. He was given command of the Cheturites and the Pelethites, elite uh, mercenary company, and David's bodyguard. Benaiah would later uh, loyalty to King David. He would go on to be a division commander that commanded 24,000 soldiers in David's army. David, Benaiah would be loyal to David to the day he died, so much so he, he was instrumental in doing the safeguarding of the passing of the royal succession to Solomon's to King Solomon after David's death. Benaiah, this little private that went in, this, uh, <laughs> that went in a, a snowy pit to kill a lion, would gain the honor of Solomon at the coronation of Gideon, or a Gihan, as Solomon's then would be named Solomon's supreme army commander and chief of staff. That's a little biblical history to lesson tonight. Benaiah is responsible for executing those who oppose the new king. And he went about it valiantly in the kingdom of the service of the Lord. I look back in my life, and I think everybody can look back in here, and I guarantee you, you all have similar things. And you can recognize this simple truth that I'm going to tell you right here. And that is the most incredible opportunities that I had in my life were the scariest of lions. And I think you guys have that too. The scariest of lions. Part of me has always wanted to play it safe. It's part of me, but I've learned that taking no risk is a significant risk. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I wish I could get young people to understand that today. Looking back in my life, I realized the most significant risk I took personally, and Tammy and I collectively were the most incredible opportunities. Despite the sleepless nights and sometimes life often decisions caused me to, that, I, that I made, I still took the steps of faith even when I felt scared about it. And those are the times that I think I've excelled most of my life. And I could probably say the same for you guys as well if you look back in your life. With every head bowed and all eyes closed, Father God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for this word that you gave to me, and I thank you for the folks that came out here tonight to, to analyze your word, and we're going to have a discussion about it here in a second, Lord, but if there's somebody that needs a prayer tonight, Lord, I just pray that somebody's watched this online, that they don't know you, Lord. I know there's a Benai out there that may not have the Holy Spirit yet. I pray, Lord, that, that you would give them salvation have them understand that it's all about admitting that you're a sinner, believing that you're the Son of God, and then committing to you forever. God, we love you, and we praise you, and we thank you, and we hallow your name. 
And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.